Today I'm going to reveal the secrets of this little hidden Baroque church in Rome. Let's start! Hi everyone and welcome back to Exploring Art. This is Alessandro and today I'm going to talk about a Baroque architecture that you can visit in Rome, San Carlo alle Quattro Fontane or Saint Charles at the Four Fountains. Um, it's a tiny church, not as famous as the main churches in Rome, but trust me, it's one of the most important examples of Baroque art, not just in Rome, but in the whole world. This is the third video about the Baroque series, and if you missed the first two, don't worry, you can find the links below. Just remember to subscribe and turn on the notifications, so you are not going to miss the next episodes. Back to our architecture, San Carlo alle Quattro Fontane is a Roman Catholic church designed by the architect Francesco Borromini and it was his first independent commission. I want to emphasize that Borromini was not scared back then of the fact that this one was his first commission since he worked for many many years with another great architect Carlo Maderno and actually Borromini was young but really skilled. So starting from the 1630s when he heard that the monks of the Trinitarian order were looking for an architect to complete their monastery, Borromini was 31 back then, he offered to complete the commission for free just to start his own career as a solo architect. He finally received the task in 1634 and actually was not supposed to design just the church, but also the monastic buildings and a cloister. Now, the main challenge is that the space was so little that fit everything inside there, it seemed impossible. But he did it. And I want to start with the floor plan, even if I know that it seems uh, messy, uh, but I'm going to explain it to you soon, because like that we can appreciate better Borromini's job. Uh, the monastic buildings and the cloister were started first uh, because of course the monks uh, needed a place where they could live, while the church construction took place from 1638 to 1641. Probably you are wondering why that weird shape. Don't worry right now. Just I want that we focus on the fact that Borromini had to design everything from scratch. So on this side there is the street, then this is the entrance to the cloister, this is the cloister, and here the monastic buildings. In the space left Borromini designed the church. And there we go, this is the facade of the church. Crazy, right? In particular, if we consider that Borromini had just a width of 12 meters, so just 39 feet. And here his genius, design an ondulated layout to enhance the contrast and dramas that they are typical of the Baroque, but at the same time to give the idea that the church is not squeezed. If you watched the previous video, um, probably you remember that Bernini adopted the same solution, with the same purpose, create more volume, more depth, and at the same time more contrast on the surfaces, that it's one of the main features of Baroque art. And here Borromini had to adopt this solution, because a more flat surface um, it would have given the idea of a um, tall and narrow rectangular shape and probably from the street it would have looked pretty anonymous and he couldn't waste the opportunity he finally had to show his skills as an architect. The main problem on using ondulated lines is to manage the space. So what Borromini did here is something simple but smart. He used tall Corinthian columns standing on plinths and bearing the main entablatures to define the main framework based on two stories and a tripartite vertical division. The consequence is this sort of grid, with the main entrance in the lower half and then three statues, the central figure of St. Charles Borromeo, 
the saint who the church is dedicated to, on his left, Saint John of Mata, and on the right, Saint Felix of Valois. Both are the founders of the Trinitarian order. In the upper part, we have the same grid structure. In fact, the first entablature cuts in a half the facade of the church, making space for a terrace. Then, instead of the entrance, we have a big window that allows to have natural light inside the church, and two niches on the sides that originally were designed for other two statues. On the top, there is an oval framed medallion born aloft by angels that originally contained a 1677 fresco of the Holy Trinity. Even if the structure is the same, however, we can tell that the upper part seems lighter. And actually it is. It is for static reasons, but also aesthetic reasons. Borromini reached this result, making the top entablature way lighter compared to the first one, also the decorations are lighter as well compared to the lower part, and then the shape of the oval medallion that pushes the point of view on the top. And now let's move inside to see how Borromini continued to design with ingenious solutions. And this is the surprise of the inside, a space that we couldn't even imagine. An unexpected combination of curves modeled on an elliptical floor plan that is astonishing. With this section we can understand better how the interior is divided. There are in fact three parts, the lower with 16 columns bearing the entablature, the transition zone with the pendentives and the oval covered the dome with its oval lantern. On the inside, like on the outside, Borromini had the same issue. So, the problem of a narrow space, but pretty tall, with the difference that inside this feeling is amplified. So, he had to find a balance between the sensation of an empty space and the sensation of a claustrophobic space. He was able to solve the problem with a very, very smart combination of curves and decorations. As you can see, in fact, the more we go up, the more the decorations are evident, and the 16 columns help to push our point of view from the bottom to the top to admire better all the details. And once our eyes reach the top, this is the amazing view that we have. And now I think that the messy floor plan I showed you before makes more sense. This is one of the most beautiful Baroque views. And what is even more insane is that Borromini was able to design, create a space that make us forget the real dimensions of the church. And he did that with a smart and wise combination and contrast between, for example, curved lines and straight lines, or the floral patterns inside the pendentives and the geometrical patterns, for example, inside the dome. The result is a space that seems to pulse because we feel like it's getting closer or further based on where we look or move. These are all the reasons why Borromini is considered one of the greatest Baroque architects. And uh, in particular here, he was able to design something unique in such a little space, making of a church like San Carlo alle Quattro Fontane one of the best examples of Baroque architecture. And thanks to this church, he was able to show his skills, but he was able also to compete with probably the best architect back then, uh, Gian Lorenzo Bernini, and, and this competition was able to push Baroque to levels that were and are unbelievable. In the description below you can find some links to my website where you can learn more about this work of art and not only. In the next episode of this series I'm going to talk about painting. Remember to subscribe and turn on the notifications so you're not going to miss any of the next episodes and see you soon.